The Origins of Songs Top 5. Did you know? Yesterday by the Beatles is one of the most famous and covered songs in the world, but its creation was quite spontaneous. Paul McCartney woke up one morning with the melody fully formed in his head. Believing it must be a song he had heard before, he spent weeks asking other musicians if they recognized it. Since nobody did, McCartney realized it was an original composition. To avoid forgetting the tune, he initially used the placeholder title of Scrambled Eggs until he could come up with proper lyrics. Eventually, the poignant lyrics we now associate with Yesterday emerged. The song was originally offered to Chris Farlow, but he turned it down because he said it was too soft. Well, Chris, you missed out on history, my friend. The Beatles eventually released it in 1965, and the song became a timeless classic ever since. Freddie Mercury had the entire vision and composition for Bohemian Rhapsody etched in his mind before the band even began recording. The song, over six minutes long, featured not a single chorus, but only verses and bridges. During the complex recording process, especially in the operatic section, Freddie Mercury layered his voice over 180 times to achieve the desired choir-like effect. Because who needs a choir when you have a voice like Freddie Mercury's? Although Freddie never explained the meaning behind the lyrics, rumors persist of a hidden message within the operatic section, supposedly saying, it's fun to smoke marijuana. Upon its release in 1975, the song topped charts in multiple countries and became Queen's signature piece. In the early 90s, the song made a comeback with a cameo appearance in the film Wayne's World. Who remembers the famous headbanging scene where they rock out to Bohemian Rhapsody in the car? Party on. Kurt Cobain aimed to craft the ultimate pop song with Smells Like Teen Spirit drawing inspiration from the Pixies' dynamic structure, soft verses and loud choruses. Bassist Krist Novoselic played a riff inspired by Louie Louie. Drummer Dave Grohl added disco flams on the drums, and all three were credited as writers. The title was inspired by a friend who spray-painted Kurt Smells Like Teen Spirit on his wall, referencing a deodorant brand. Cobain, unaware of the brand, saw it as a powerful anti-establishment slogan. At least this rebellion didn't leave a bad smell. The iconic line, here we are now, entertain us, was actually something Cobain regularly said when he went to parties. The music video was inspired in part by the 1979 movie Over the Edge, a favorite of Cobain's, and the cheerleaders in the video were hired from a local strip club. The unplanned climactic destruction in the video finale resulted from frustration after a grueling 12-hour shoot. Now that smells like teen spirit. The song I Will Always Love You made famous by Whitney Houston wasn't actually written by Whitney Houston. It was originally written by Dolly Parton, and it wasn't even supposed to be a battle cry for deeply in love couples who for whatever reason couldn't be together. Dolly Parton wrote the original song in 1973 as a farewell to her former singing partner and mentor, Porter Wagoner. Choosing a solo career, she foresaw his likely disapproval, so she did what she did best and wrote a song to express her gratitude. Little did she know it would later become the ultimate anthem for star-crossed lovers. Whitney Houston's 1992 release of the song as the lead single for the Bodyguard soundtrack, in which she also starred, became one of the best-selling singles ever. It topped the Billboard Hot 100 chart for a record-breaking 14 weeks. Dolly received significant royalties from Whitney's cover and donated every cent to the United Negro College Fund. Now that's an encore worth applauding. Bob Dylan never intended Like a Rolling Stone to be a song when he initially wrote it. Surprisingly, it began as a 10-page long poem. One night in 1965, after a grueling tour in England, Dylan found himself depressed and alone in his hotel room. In a burst of emotion, he poured his feelings onto ten pages of paper. It wasn't until he sat at the piano one day that the line, How does it feel, sang out to him. Dylan then condensed the ten pages into four verses and a chorus recording it a few weeks later, just in time for it to be featured on his upcoming album Highway 61 Revisited. Contrary to popular belief, the title is not a nod to the band The Rolling Stones. Instead, it's inspired by the proverb, A rolling stone gathers no moss. Dylan drew inspiration from Hank Williams' song Lost Highway, which includes the line, I'm a rolling stone all alone and lost. That's one way to turn hotel room blues into an iconic tune.